Tell me if this sounds familiar. You set out to create a quick rendering in Keyshot. You start by trying out a few HDRIs, but then you end up swapping those out with physical lights, and then you're adding backdrops and props and messing around with textures and lighting and image styles and render settings. Before you know it, you've basically fallen down the rabbit hole and spent way more time on your image than you intended to. Now, once I realized that nine out of 10 times, I do the same exact things in each Keyshot scene, I came up with a plan to reduce the time spent setting up a brand new scene. So after creating a new startup studio and making some small changes to my workflow, whenever I launch Keyshot now, the work to getting a passable rendering is like 90% done. So today I'm gonna to show you how to cut out nearly all the time you spend setting up a rendering and I'm going to give you my custom startup studio file for free so you don't have to make your own. You're welcome. To get your free project files for today's tutorial, sign up for the File Vault by visiting willgibbons.com and entering your email address in the form at the top of the page and click Sign Up. The first step is going to be to download the Startup Studio's zip file and extract the .bip file onto your desktop. Next, you wanna to navigate to the Keyshot directory. For Windows users, this will be in the C drive, into your users folder, your personal user folder, documents, then Keyshot 10 or whatever version you're using. And I will mention that this startup studio was created using Keyshot 10. It is not backwards compatible. It will not work on previous versions of Keyshot. Go into that Keyshot 10 folder, into the scenes folder, and drag that BIP folder right into the scenes. Next, we're gonna launch Keyshot 10. Once Keyshot's up, find the preferences, go to general. You're going to browse to that new startup studios file and go ahead and load it hit Save Changes, and then restart Keyshot. Upon relaunching, you should see something like this, and we're going to change our user interface to show everything we've done here. Hit U on the keyboard for Studios, and you can go ahead and dock this on the right-hand side of your user interface. I'll make a little bit more room. And we're also going to open the Geometry view with O, and this can be docked on top of your Libraries view on the left. And we should have a small, a medium, and a large studio ready to go. This is the basis of this file, and I'm gonna show you how it works next. The first thing I'm gonna do is navigate back to the Libraries panel and over to the Models tab. If you didn't see last week's video on how I like to use the Models Library to speed up my Keyshot workflow, I recommend you check that out. Now today I'm gonna to render this Hector lamp. It's a smaller product, so I wanna go and select my small studio. Each of these studios are sized based on the size of the product. In this case, if we look in the scene tree, we will see that this studio contains a small one by one foot box and a couple of uh, lights and a backdrop. Before I bring the lamp into the scene though, I wanna create a new empty model set. So we'll click this button here. If you can't see your model sets, just grab these three dots, drag to the right, and you're gonna create a new empty model set. I'll call this one lamp, and I'm gonna turn this off so none of the existing geometry within the active studio gets copied into the new model set. I'll go ahead and hit okay. So here we are in the new model set with nothing in it. That's why everything disappeared. Next, I wanna drag the Hector lamp right into this active model set. We'll go ahead and just click okay to accept the positioning from the start. The next thing I wanna do is turn on our small studio. So now that both of these are active, we can go ahead and move the lamp into position. It's easiest to do this in the geometry view. I'm gonna select the model set within the scene tree where it says lamp. In the geometry view, I'll right click and say move selection. And I want to snap it to the box because the box is what the camera's focused on. So in the move tool, I'm going to set a pivot. The crosshairs icon will give you that option. And then I'll click the box within the geometry view and hit okay. Now I have to click this button that says snap to pivot. And now my lamp is aligned with the box. If I zoom in a little bit, I can move the lamp on over. So it's more or less centered within the box. And it looks like it's too low on the ground. So I'm going to move it up. I can change my geometry views camera to either the right or the left to give me a better understanding of where the uh, lamp is positioned. And then from here, I just need to grab the move tool and drag the lamp up in the right position. Once it looks like the lamp is not sticking through the ground, I can go ahead and push the lamp further back or bring it more toward the camera, but I'm just gonna leave it centered with the cube for now. Now you can see the lamp is a little too big because it's quite a bit bigger than this box. It's about twice the size. So in this case, we just need to move our camera back. If we go to our camera tab, you'll see small front is active and it's locked. So I'm gonna unlock it 
and just drag the distance slider to move it away from the lamp a little bit. And I'll middle mouse click and drag to more or less reposition this where I want it. From there, I'll go ahead and save the small camera and lock it back up. Now back in the scene tree, we're going to hide and lock the small cube, right click to hide and lock, and now that's gone. Now that we've got our lamp positioned, I get to run you through all the fun different ways we can modify this studio to get the look that we want. In the studios panel, grab these three dots and drag up and you'll be able to play with all the different settings. Let's click on the small studio and the lamp disappears. That's because we need to make some changes to the settings within the small studio. Let's start off by ensuring that the lamp model set is active. So now both of those are showing up. And then from here, we can play with things like different multi-materials. For example, our backdrop is starting with a white color, but we could try gray, or we could go for black if we want a really dark look. I think that the white looks pretty good overall for this kind of modern product. The other multi-materials we have are the lights. So for example, we can take the front lights and change them from neutral, which they are now, that's a white color, to cool. So this gets a little bit more blue, or we could choose a warm color, which is a little bit more warm. Now, of course you can change these. I wanted them to be subtle and not overly saturated. So because the lamp itself puts out a warm color, I'm gonna choose the cool front lights. And then for the overhead light, I can also go to the cool uh, overhead light. And now we have this nice kind of blue backdrop. The environment we have active, I'll show you those real quick. There are two options, there's dark and bright. And this just fills in some of the ambient light. So you could change it from dark to bright, but of course it's gonna blow our scene out. So let's go back to dark. From here, the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could turn off individual parts. So for example, if I don't want the overhead lights on, I could just turn that off. And since this is a lamp, we get a lot of light from the lamp as well. I'll turn it on for now. Now, if I want to render a new thumbnail, I just click on render thumbnail and all those settings that we just assigned to the studio will stay when we navigate away and then come back to it. So just to show you a few more examples, next I'll go to the medium studio and I'll go to my library of models. And the next thing I wanna render is this armchair or it's a chair, it doesn't have arms. In order to do that, of course, we wanna create a new empty studio. So I'll call this chair. I will not copy any existing geometry into it. Here we are in the new empty model set. Let's drag the chair into the scene. Okay, I'm gonna just leave that where it is for now. And I'm going to activate that medium sized model set. Set the chair model set to be active using the drop down accordion. There we go. And back to our geometry view. So in our geometry view, we can see this studio is much larger than the one we just used. If I go to the scene tree, we'll see that there's a medium three by three foot box. Let's go ahead and grab that new model set, right click in the geometry view and move selection. And same thing, we're going to set the pivot to be the box or the cube, and we'll snap to that pivot so our chair is aligned. From a bird's eye view, I'm gonna rotate this chair to a nice kind of a 45 degree pleasing sort of angle. There we go. And I'm gonna hide and lock the medium three by three foot box. Hide and lock, that's a right click in the scene tree. And our chair is not touching the ground. Let's grab it, go to position, and just snap to ground. That'll look a little bit better. And in this case, I actually want to bring our camera a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and unlock it. Now, the reason these cameras aren't perfectly set up is because I don't know what you're going to render or what I'm gonna render every time. So they're set up to be approximate. And then you just make a subtle change, go ahead and save it, and you're good to go. Within our medium studio options, of course, we could go and play with the lights or the backdrop. So what if I want a gray backdrop? I could set that. And then for our lights, I could go with, um, say, warm lights. And that's looking a little dark for me, so I'm gonna go for neutral this time. The neutral, again, is just a white color. And then if we go to medium overhead, that's in neutral as well. No, I'm gonna go with cool. And when I'm happy with this, I will click and render the thumbnail. Now let's go ahead and see what we've got one more time for the large studio example expose the model sets and we want to create a new empty model set this time i'm going to call it car and we'll turn off everything else inside the new empty model set i'm going to drag a car model that i have saved to my library hit ok to position it 
So next I'm gonna select the large studio and underneath its model sets, I want to turn on the car model set. So that's in there too. Back to the geometry view. We're gonna use the geometry view to place the car. I'll select the car, right click in the geometry view to move selection. Could snap it to the cube again, but this one's pretty easy to position just by looking at it. I don't think we need to snap into position. And then really it's just a matter of placing it onto the ground because again, this one doesn't seem to wanna to snap to the ground. Every model's going to be a little bit different in that way. It just depends on how it was imported and all that. Now I want to hide the large six by six foot cube. I'm just going to right click, hide and lock. And this is pretty cool looking, although I think it's kind of blending in too much the background. So I'm going to change the backdrop to something darker like black. And honestly, I think I like the lights being neutral, the white, because if I change them to blue or a cool or warm light, then the car's not going to look white anymore. So I'll go ahead and render this thumbnail. I'm pretty happy with this one. I think I want to change the camera angle. Let's do that just a little bit. It's a little too low for my liking. And I'm going to bring it a little closer. I think that's good. I'll go ahead and save that. And just like that, in a few minutes, we we're able to drop some products into our scene. And if you don't have your library models ready to go to drag in, you can drag new models from your uh, computer into a new model set. Just make sure on the import settings that you choose to place it in the new model set. And what's great is if we were to go out to render these, of course, in our queue, we could add all of the studios and they are ready to render. Uh, this frame count shows that three images will render out. Now, before I let you go, I do wanna mention that, of course, the positioning of these lights are all just uh, a starting point. So if we look at the geometry view, you can, of course, at any point, grab one of these lights and move it around to customize it. So if we wanna move this front panel, I can hit move selection. Of course, we can choose to pivot around the car or uh, the large six by six foot box if we want to. And then we can just rotate this light panel around so we can just light the car from the front and the back. That could be pretty cool too. But again, the sky's the limit. And of course, if you wanna edit any of these materials that are applied to the lights, just give them a double click and you can make them brighter or change their color, just as you would in any other key shot scene. One more thing I'll mention before you go, I've already taken care of setting up the render settings. Of course, if you're rendering something that requires caustics, turn that on, but otherwise you're in product mode. And I've gone in and created a photographic image style. You can see without it what it looks like. It just adds a bit more contrast. It uses a little bit of tone mapping, a little bit of bloom and denoise. Again, these are settings I use almost all the time. So I bake them into this scene so they're always active, uh, ready to go. Pretty cool, right? Hopefully you found this one helpful. And I wanna reiterate that this isn't gonna work for every product in every single scenario. If you have specific needs, you can of course make your own startup studios or modify the one that I provided you with and then go from there. And it will take quite a bit of the work out of setting up each image, but again, it's not gonna do all the work for you. I just found that this would streamline and cut down on a lot of the effort I put into getting a quick rendering. And in most cases, it's gonna work well enough. So until next time, happy rendering.